Hey everyone, it's Sissy. Welcome back to my kitchen. I wanted to share with you a recipe for pulled pork sandwiches using the Instant Pot. I know a lot of people are still looking for recipes, so I'm gonna share the super easy way to make a quick meal and have some nice sides along with it. So here is the recipe for pulled pork sandwiches in the Instant Pot. So here are the ingredients you will need, and it's very few for really good pulled pork sandwiches. I've got dried onions, I've got a lemon garlic um, spice mix, I've got uh, olive oil, barbecue sauce, and I like lots of garlic, so I've got more garlic. For your pork, you can use whatever you, you guys want. You can use a pork roast, a pork loin. Um, I have pork chops, I have actually ham from Easter, and this is called um, side pork or salt pork for some people. It just gives some more body and texture. So we're going to use those ingredients for our pulled pork sandwiches. So you need to obviously turn your Instant Pot on and I'm gonna put it on saute to get it heated. And you wanna have that nice and hot to grill your side pork and give it some color and to also um, get your garlic roasted nicely. So my Instant Pot's on. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon or so of olive oil. And into that, I'm gonna add, oh, a couple teaspoons. And you can hear the nice sizzle. I love garlic. I love the flavor. I love the aroma. So we're gonna get that going. and just get that roasted off. The pan does get hot, so please be careful that you don't burn yourself. Okay, so my side pork has browned off. You do not need to use side pork. You can use just one type of pork if you want. You can use multiple types of pork, but I like different types for different layers of flavor and texture. So this is the side pork. When that gets browned off, if there's a lot of fat, pull it, but there's not a ton in there and you do need some moisture. I'm just gonna layer on my pork chops. And these are pretty thin cut. And this will feed eh, five or six adults. And then when I get done putting the pork chops in, I'm gonna add some extra flavor. So I've got, and I've told you guys about these lovely jars. Um, these are big mason jars that I keep my bulk spices in. I'm gonna put a layer of onions. Not a lot, cause I'm not a big onion fan. These lids you can get at Menards or someplace. I bought mine at Menards and they're wonderful for keeping your, spi your spices fresh. And then I have one of my favorite seasonings in the whole wide world. This is garlic pepper. It's got salt, pepper, red pepper, black pepper. Um, it's just a wonderful multi-flavor spice. So I'm gonna give that a good douse. There is some salt. This is about two teaspoons, you guys. There is some salt in here, but you don't wanna over salt it either. So that's done, garlic's done, olive oil's done. The next thing I'm gonna put in even though my ham is pre-cooked, it's gonna be shredded, and those pork chops are thin, so it won't take long. Um, and this was a spiral cut ham from Easter that I froze. So I'm just gonna put those on top of the pork chops and add those in there in a layer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna shred it to do the sandwiches, so it doesn't matter that it's different cuts or sizes. So that's in. Now, you do need some moisture, but there's moisture in the meat and there's moisture in the pork chops. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water before I put my lid on to cook it. So I'm adding about a half a cup of water, and you can hear it bubble up, to um, help cook the meat. This will not take long to cook. But there's your meats. 
put your lid on. So I put my lid on and I set it for 20 minutes. Make sure your valve is set on sealing, not venting, because if you go either direction, it will vent and your meat will not cook. So in 20 minutes, we'll come back and we'll check our meat. We'll add our barbecue sauce after we pulled it and we'll have pulled pork sandwiches. So I mentioned sides. Um, as you can see, I've got stuff ready to go. I've got baked beans. I'm going to do corn, sweet potato fries, and I've got little slider buns I purchased. Um, you can do chips. You can do carrots. You can do coleslaw. The sides are endless, and it just depends on what sounds good to you to go with pulled pork sandwiches. So my timer did go off. I'm going to do what's called a natural release for about 15 minutes or so. What that does is it lets... The juices reabsorb into the meat. You don't have to do that, but if you don't allow that to happen, your meat might not be as tender and you probably have to cook it for more than 20 minutes. So let's just see how that looks in about 15 minutes. So the meat has been on a natural release for 25 minutes. I'm gonna let the lid go and you can see there's no steam left in there. And we're take a look at our meat. I wish there was smell vision because the smell coming from this pot is amazing. Let me show you how to chop this up for pulled pork sandwiches. So you can see our meats are in the pot. Obviously, I'm just gonna take this and run it through, and my gosh, this is so tender. This will pull apart in no time and shred. Um, some people use a blender. I'm just gonna keep working this meat until it's into bits and bite same pieces. And I don't know if you can see this, but look at that meat. It's like perfect. The pork chops, the side pork, the ham, they're all, I mean, oh my gosh, you guys. Look how tender that is. And then we're gonna mix it with some sauce. There's not a ton of extra liquid. I don't know if you can see that or not. So that will just add to the flavor, but the smell is incredible. So I'm gonna show you another quick technique you can use for pulling your pork. It's got pork on my shirt, that's all right. Um, two forks. You cannot do this on a non-stick ceramic pot. It has to be your stainless steel because you will scratch the bejeebers out of it. But just take your fork, your two forks, and literally you're gonna pull your meat. The other way you can do this, and I don't like the other way, is get some gloves on and get your hands in there and do it. But again, I don't like that technique because I am not not when it comes to meat. I'll be hands on for bread, but you can see that it's just pulling apart and will be amazing pulled pork sandwiches. So that's the two fork technique. So this is how the meat looks. I like mine a little chunkier, um, but you can do whatever you like. But oh my gosh, you guys, the smell and the flavor is amazing. I'm gonna put my barbecue sauce on later because, um, <coughs> excuse me, I think there's dairy in there in this brand and Sarah can't have dairy so I'm gonna make it so she can eat it too so I am not quite done shredding it but I just want to show you guys because I love to taste my food so you know I will actually eat what I cook this is a piece of pork chop um the, one of the concerns is the amount of salt that's why you have to be careful with the salt but this you guys so good tender juicy finger licking you do not have to add barbecue sauce i add mine because it's just easier you can do this ahead you can keep it warm in your instant pot you can serve it later um shred it fine shred it chunky however you like it but make it and enjoy it we'll see you guys later